What's up, everybody? Back with another video, and we're talking about our favorite bets in NFL Week 4. We didn't have the best week in Week 3. Um, their lock, the Packers minus 2, was a loss for us, but that line ended up moving to Packers plus 1 at game time. So depending on when you bet that, that might have been a winner for you. Otherwise, the only thing on the official card was the Jets-Patriots under, which was hit by a long shot. And then to make our losses not really go on the negative, we had some great bets on Twitter with Justin Jefferson over 99 and a half receiving yards. That almost was, was cashed at halftime. And the Nick Bosa over 0.75 sacks was cashed at halftime. So those bets definitely helped this week and managed us to be up two units through week three. As always, like the video, comment what you're taking this week, what you think of our picks, and subscribe to keep getting this content week in and week out in addition to all of our other NFL videos. The first game that I want to talk about here on the card is the Buccaneers facing their divisional opponents, the New Orleans Saints, at the Superdome. Three-point favorite here for the Saints, pretty low under. Um, again, this three-point would be a little bit less if there was a neutral field, so really implying a tight game, low-scoring game by this, this box here. Overall, for these two teams, I'm very unimpressed, especially on the offensive side of the football to start the season. You look at the Bucks. started out 2-0, but in those two wins, they scored 20 points against the Vikings, 27 against the Bears, but seven of those were from the defense, so 20 points offensively against the Bears, and were only able to put up 11 against the Eagles. So this offense is yet to crack 21 points on offense throughout the first three games of the season. They're facing a Saints defense that's very good in my mind. Shut out the Packers offense for the first three quarters of the game uh, last week and are the pro football focus's ninth ranked defense overall. No surprise with how good this unit is and especially with Dennis Allen, former defensive coordinator, filling in as head coach in Sean Payton's absence. So looking really good for the defensive side of the football for the Saints against this uh, blundering Buccaneers offense. But the tail of tape is very similar on the offense side. The Saints have really struggled on an offense too this year. They put up 16 points against the Titans. Uh, they only put up 17 points against the Packers last week. Seven of those were a special team score. And then their week two game, they only put up 20 points against the Panthers. So with ne neither of these teams breaking 21 offensive points, at any point this season through week three. I really like the under here at 40 and a half. Again, divisional matchup seems to be that seems to mean that games are going to be closer than maybe they otherwise should be. Uh, these two teams are very familiar with each other. We'll look out for Mike Evans and Marshawn Lattimore getting into it real early in this game for possible head Jacksons, which we've seen in the past from these guys. But a big story that I haven't talked about either uh, too much is Jameis Winston filling in at quarterback for the injured Derek Carr. Winston, who used to play for the Bucks for and was drafted by them, has been an injury or well injury, but also a turnover prone quarterback all of his career. Uh, the Buccaneers have, you know, shown this season that they forced plenty of turnovers against the Vikings, against the Eagles, and against the Bears. Obviously, the Eagles' offense much more potent than the Saints here. So really, what we're fading on this under is any defensive or special team scores that we've seen both these teams do in Week Two and Week Three, uh, respectively. Fading that, I really like the under 40 and a half here. Look for some turnovers, maybe when the Saints or the Bucks are deep in the opponent territory and the defense steps up and saves some points on the board with a turnover. But again, barring a defensive or special teams touchdown, I love this under at 40 and a half here. Another game I wanted to talk about next, the Patriots versus the Cowboys here in Dallas. Cowboys coming off a tough loss against the Cardinals in Glendale and Patriots coming off a win 15th straight against the Jets here. What I noticed about these two teams, um, really, like the other two teams I just mentioned, the defense stands out more than anything. Even for a Cowboys team that is pretty solid in offense and has got a lot of playmakers like C.D. Lamb, you can see here, it's that defense that shines and it's really all starting with that defensive line behind Demarcus Lawrence, behind Micah Parsons, my pick for defensive player of the year. Those guys can put on pressure at the quarterback like nobody else in the league. And that's going to be really impactful here in, in this game, especially because this Patriots O-line has struggled this season against the pass rush and really against any solid front seven. The, the offensive line for the Patriots has long been a staple of their success under the Belichick regime. But this year it's really fallen off and it's now a bottom third unit in the league in terms of pass blocking. So they're really going to struggle against this Cowboys offense. 
Luckily, the saving grace for the Patriots, as we saw against the Jets, um, is their defense able to hold the Jets to 10 points. Um, really shows that their defense is solid. You know, Christian Gonzalez, a court, rookie at cornerback, is really stepping up there. You're probably thinking to yourself, big deal. These guys held the Jets to 10 points. The Jets are terrible on offense. Just the week before, they held the Dolphins to 24 points, which isn't a small amount, but given the fact that they just put up 70, you know, that really puts in perspective how solid this Patriots defense is. And week one at home against the Eagles, held the Eagles to 25 points. Pretty innocuous total for a team with as potent offense the Eagles have. And the, that defense gave the Patriots a chance to win the game in week one. So really solid defenses on both sides of the football here. Obviously, the Cowboys defense gets the edge. Dak Prescott, you saw against the Cardinals game, a little turnover prone. And this Patriots defense and Bill Belichick have a knack for turning the ball over here. I think this game is going to be pretty close. I also, like the last game, like the under in it. You know, I'm hyping up both these defenses. I don't think the Patriots, especially behind that good O-line, will be able to put up many points. You know, Patriots put up 15 points against the Jets on the road. Patriots on the road again against arguably a better defense. Certainly a, a more stout defensive line. That's going to make running the ball hard, which is their bread and butter. And when Mac Jones gets steps back in the pocket to pass, he's going to have such little time there that I would be surprised to see the Patriots put up a ton more than, you know, 15, 17 points this game. But as the Patriots do, their defense will keep them in the game somehow. And then that is how I come to this under at 43 and a half, which I like a lot as well. Moving to another game, talking about the other the other pair of that Jets Patriots game last week. The Jets are now hosting back to back games. They got the Chiefs this week. Definitely not better than hosting the Patriots. Chiefs coming off a smack into the Bears and Jets coming off a five point loss, like I mentioned to the Patriots. Again, with these two teams, what I noticed the most, especially uh, for the Jets, but even for the Chiefs, their defense has impressed me so far this season. We don't really need to talk about the, the Jets these so much. We know how great they are. Uh, you know, they held the Bills to, what, 16 points in week one, which is incredibly impressive given what the Bills have done since. Obviously, they, they kept the Patriots offense in check as well, which isn't nearly as difficult. But you look at the Chiefs' defensive performance this year, it's incredibly impressive. Holding the Bears to 10 points, I think a lot of teams can do that. Holding the Jaguars to 9 points, that's really impressive to me. And then holding the Lions to Week 1 uh, to only 21 points, I thought was incredibly impressive, given how great and how versatile that Lions offense can be. And given that, given the assumption that the max amount of points, even a good offense can score is 21 against the Chiefs, you know the Jets aren't breaking 21-point total this game. They're probably on par for another 10, 13 point, 14 point performance like they did last week. That being said, I think the Jets defense keeps them in this game, at least marginally. And I think the Jets cover this nine and a half. But once again, and the last time I promise, I am on the under in this game. 42 and a half. Uh, you know, I don't expect the Jets to put up more than, I think, 17 is their limit. And then uh, I think they keep the game close enough for this defense, you know, strong defense all around Sauce, Sauce Gardner at cornerback, C.J. Mosey, linebacker, some decent pressure on the quarterback in the pass rush. I think they make Mahomes' life difficult enough where um, they might struggle moving the, the ball downfield systematically. You're not going to see as many touchdowns as you saw for the Chiefs as normal. I think they're going to be settling for field goals a lot more than they're used to. So Jets not scoring a lot of points. Defense keeping them in this game makes me like the under. You know, the Chiefs could realistically score 30, and the Jets not break 10, and it still hits. So it's really a bet on the Jets not scoring a lot of points and, you know, having one of the better defensive units in this league, keeping them at least marginally in this game. You know, Jets a top five defense, so you got to hope they can do that here. Another game, promise, not taking the under here. In London, 8.30 a.m. Central Time, you got the Jags hosting the Falcons both coming off a, a pretty brutal loss, I'd say, on each side in week three. Uh, both fighting for, this, for the division titles and both realistically could win. Jags three-point favorites here on a neutral side, so a true three-point favorite. And uh, this is going to be one of my favorite games to watch, not only because it'll be the only game on early Sunday morning, but um, I have high hopes for both these teams in terms of the playoff race and the division race, and a win here for either team will really help them and take one step closer to that. Falcons looked really good in my mind starting up this season um, because I really like what they did in the offseason. 
in terms of free agency and obviously drafting B. John Robinson in the first round of the draft. This is a team that is run first, run second, run third. And behind that offensive line with the duo of Robinson and Algier, uh, they're able to do that a lot, not able to do that against the Lions, and that's why you saw them struggle so much and they failed to get in the end zone that game. Jaguars, on the other hand, I think have one of the good offenses in this league and really one of the best all-around teams in football. I'm looking for them to bounce back this game against the, after a couple losses against Houston and um, the Chiefs back to, in back-to-back -back weeks. Obviously, the Chiefs are much more understandable of a loss here. But they're, not, they're one and two now, the Jaguars, third in their division after losing the head-to-head -head match with the Texans. And this, in my mind, is their division to win, not the Colts. Uh, not the Titans and certainly not the Texans. So this is the kind of game they need to win to get back on track here. And that's why I really like them uh, with the money line here in week in week four. Um, like I said, if you can stop this Falcons run game, then I think you have a really solid chance to beat them. And that's what the lines proved. You know, make this team one dimensional and you have a really good shot at beating them. I'm surprised that the Lions were able to have so much success, but they did well. Jaguars, uh, you know, middle of the road, number 15th ranked rush defense in the NFL this season. I think they can uh, slow down this this Falcons rush offense enough where they make Desmond Ritter, Drake London, and Kyle Pitts get in uncomfortable situations where they're not going to be able to keep up with the arm and the passing aerial attack of the Jaguars. So big bounce back win here to avoid going one and three to get to two and two, and likely the divisional lead if um, the Colts can fall in Week Four. So, praying on the Falcons' downfall, even though I think they could still win that division and go 2-2 two two here. Last game I want to talk about are and probably the best matchup of this week. Bills and the Dolphins, and really, you have to think the winner of this game, especially if it is the Dolphins playing on the road in Buffalo, would win this division here. After winning by 50 points last week and putting up 70, the Dolphins find themselves in unfamiliar territory and are uh, underdogs on the road going to Buffalo. Buffalo, after dropping that overtime loss in week one on Monday Night Football, are now 2-1, and, and, you know, the favorites to go 3-1 and, and take the division lead here in this game, which is a little bit surprising to me. This line was just shocking to me when it came out and still puzzling me a little bit because how do you go from beating a team by 50 points to being, and 3-0, and undefeated, one of the best-looking teams in the league and pro football focuses, highest-graded team in the league, and now you're an underdog against, you know, a very solid divisional opponent, but they're 2-1. and one. They lost to the Jets without Aaron Rodgers. There's a lot of question marks around this game. Something that really surprised me looking at it, though, is took a look at that Bills defense, and they are very good this year, especially when you're looking at, looking at it from a points-per-game perspective. So they lost their week one game 16, 22-16. 16 of those points, offensive for the Jets. Six of them, that punt return for a touchdown. Then week two, I think they let up 10 points against the Raiders. And then week three, three points against the Commanders. So doing some quick math here, that is only 29 offensive points that the Bills have let up through three weeks. And that's really going to be the difference maker if they're going to even want to have a chance to slow down this Dolphins offense. I think given the strength of that Bills defense, again, only 29 points, less than 10 points a game the defense has let up for offense, for, against the opponent's offense. Uh, I think that'll be enough to let the Bills come back here and, and have a really entertaining win at home against the Dolphins. I think the Bills covered two and a half here because of those reasons, but even more so than anything, I think this is one of the biggest trap lines I've ever seen in my entire life. The line has started at uh, minus three Bills, a sense moved for the Dolphins, no surprise there, just given their week three performance. But when at first glance, I love the Dolphins at plus three here. I love putting the Dolphins plus three in a teaser, making it like plus nine. But that just, it seems too good. It seems too juicy. And that's why I really like the Bills here, minus two and a half. Um, I, honestly, I think the under is probably in play here as well, given how good that Bills defense is on a points per game total. And I think the Bills offense is a little bit too one-dimensional in my liking with Stephon Diggs kind of force-feeding him the ball. But look for the, the rookie tight end, Dalton Kincaid, to have a bigger role in this game. And James Cook at running back to carry some of the load there as well. Definitely a trap game here that I think you're on the right side of the bet if you're on the Bills here. So just take, taking a quick review here, I love that Bucks and Saints. I, 
It's 40 and a half. I'm gonna just to avoid getting hooked, taking 41 at minus 120. Two units on that lock. We've been 2-0 through the first two weeks in the lock. And then depending on when you bet the Packers, you might have won, you might have lost, but we knew the Packers had that game at, at the home opener in Lambeau no matter what, even when they were down 17-0. A couple under under games, a couple other under games I like with the Patriots, Cowboys under. Again, two good defenses there, especially the Cowboys defense. And the Chiefs Jets under, two good defenses in an elite defense when you're looking at the New York Jets here. Jags money line and a bounce back win. Put a unit and a half on that because there's some more juice on the money line, obviously. And then the Bills minus two and a half, which is really a true trap game play. But really like the board this week. And hoping you do too. Let me know what you're thinking about these bets. And best of luck betting in week four. Take a look at the other videos. If you're looking for some analysis in other games, we got that covered too. So I'll catch you guys later in week five of the NFL season. Best of luck betting, picking, survivor leagues, and what else you got this week.